Hello and welcome to Women in Post, a podcast and web series for women in post-production by Women in Post-Production. Today on the show, we'll be speaking with Beth. And sometimes when you get into those stages, you're like, oh God, is this, is this worth this? Like, have I made the right decisions here? Beth, how did you get involved in post? I bet, well, I ended up studying it, but I think like, if I think all the way back, um, I basically ended up doing like an art GCSE and that year they changed it. So I ended up doing like stop motion animation and I'd never done it before. And I had to like build like clay models and like a full set and like make a story and then like film it all. Um, and I think that was kind of like my first glimpse into kind of like making a film. And so it kind of just led on from there. Like that then meant that I decided to go and do a media BTEC at college and then ended up getting into Ravensbourne University in London um, and just started freelancing straight away, really. So what are some of the things that you really liked about going to school for it? Because some people say, yes, you should go to school. Some people say, no, you don't need to. What was your experience like? I think... I completely get where people are coming from in terms of like, no, you definitely do not need to go and do higher education for it. Um, I think, you know, you can start as a runner in the industry in like any side of it um, and just work your way up and learn on the job. And there's kind of something really fun about that. And I did do that kind of alongside my studies as well, just to get a sense for it and to also like try and get to know people as well. Because I think that's one of the main things like, it's more about knowing people. You can spend three years at university studying it, but if you haven't actually gone and done it, no one's going to trust you doing it. So mm-hmm. it's kind of like half, half. Like I felt like I gained a lot from studying it because I had no idea about film. I didn't know any of the processes. Um, I, I was never really that interested. more about cutting music stuff for me. And so I kind of needed it. And I needed to learn in that way, I think, for myself. But I can definitely see that you do not need to study it. You did freelance, right? When you, yeah, when you started did. out. What was that like? Where did you find, you know, your most work? Um, and do you still freelance now? Yeah, I still freelance now. I like, like the freedom of it. And I like getting to choose what I wanted to work on. But I think also I was kind of at a stage where I was still learning a lot. I'm mean, learning every day, but I was still really early doors in my career. And freelancing at that point in time is kind of difficult. I think it's really hard if you haven't really like established yourself in any way beforehand, because then you're just kind of going, oh, well, I haven't really got anything to show you for my work. Can I cut this thing for no money and see how it goes? And then you end up building it from there. So it was kind of, yeah, it was really interesting. But I ended up, I sort of like, I interned at a few places, like production companies and stuff. And they sort of gave me a chance to kind of like cut their stuff. And then ended up getting some stuff on my reel from that. And then being able to show other people and go, well, I've done these, can I cut your stuff? And so it kind of just, yeah, it snowboard. I really enjoy freelance. I think it's a really hard thing because it's very anxiety filled mm. like it's almost like you never know when you're getting your next job especially if you're doing it full time it's hard to actually focus on the creative aspect all the time because at the end of the day at the same time when you're freelance you're running a business mm-hmm. having yeah. to do kind of it's a whole other side to things yeah yeah i know that there's a lot of like freelance pride in people who want to freelance and things like that but at the same time like i used to consider myself a freelancer and then i started thinking well if i consider myself a business will that change my experience so that it feels more consistent will it change my branding so that i could get more money um so it's kind of like i feel like the past five ten years people have really been all about freelancing and now it's kind of shifting from okay freelancers are really business owners of you know so but anyways what are you so what are you doing now so i'm full-time at a production company um as an editor in house and i'm actually really enjoying it i'm getting to work on quite a lot of good stuff like my portfolio is like getting a lot better at being here um 
it was before I was assisting full time. And I think doing that as an editor is invaluable because you learn so much about the processes and you know how best to organise your time and how best to deal with clients and you know you see other people who've been doing it for years doing it and you're kind of then like replicating what they're doing learning from like them in their shadow and I think like it's so so important to have gone through that process personally um, but I think yeah I just wanted to have a bit more time to actually actually edit and learn the creative aspects of it because you can know the technology for you know, you can know everything about all the tech, but if you can't actually sit and be creative and know how to cut something, it's kind of, you know, I feel like you need to have a balance. Mm-hmm. Like it's important to have both, not just one or the other. Um, yeah. And I think the way that the industry works here is a little bit too focused on the tech um, and getting stuff in that world for a, a while. What does that look like? So when, you, when you're talking about focused on the tech, what do you mean? Like knowing multiple softwares and getting stuff from ingest and prep to online and multilingual delivery in all of those different systems. Mm. Um, and I think it's really, really important to know as much as you can about that kind of stuff. But I do think it's equally as important to be able to actually, you know, sit down with an edit and know how to approach it. Mm. And I don't think you really get that when you're assisting because mm. people aren't really talking to you about how they're cutting stuff or why they're doing things. You're just sort of watching them and taking on board what you can and your interpretation of that. I think you really don't learn, you know, how to approach a certain edit until you've done a certain edit and mm-hmm. you learn from it and you move on and you do a similar thing again and you learn something different. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I think like there's an important balance to be had there. Yeah, so, well, so for the people who have maybe never been an assistant editor before, or for the people who are an assistant and have never been the editor before, how do those two roles compare? I think they're very, very different. I think as an assistant, it's a lot of organisation, and you're kind of thinking, how would I prepare myself for this job if I was cutting it? Um, but also understanding what your specific editor's needs are because everybody works differently and I think it's you know a lot of being organized and flexible and being able to listen and take constructive criticism on what you're doing and you know your job essentially as an assistant is to help your editor be able to stay on top of everything that they need to be doing and everything needs to be ready to go essentially so that schedules um, work and then I guess, you know, as an editor, it is definitely more the creative aspect and also the dealing with people. Um, it's so much client facing. I think a lot of people think that editing, you know, you're stuck in a dark room a lot of the time. And actually, you know, a lot of the time you're with people and you're dealing with people and you're going through feedback and you know, you're being criticised the entire time. It's obviously not personal criticism. Um, I think that's really important to remember that like, when you do get criticised for like your work, it's not about you. Because I feel like when you first start out, it's very, very easy to take something personal if you spend hours and hours and hours doing something. And somebody comes in and goes, that's not what I wanted at all. Or this isn't very good. Um, it's kind of more about how you deal with those kind of obstacles that come forward and how you approach it as a team Mm -hmm. because everybody wants the same end goal out of a job everybody Mm -hmm. wants a really good piece of work that everybody's happy with and I think as an editor it's your job to mediate that um, and also you know keep your film knowledge and creative mindset uh, kind of along with that if that makes sense (laughs) It's like trying to stay true to yourself, but also give the client what they want, sort of thing. Yeah. 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 And knowing when to kind of pull back and push on things. It's a yeah. massive learning curve. And yeah. And you're, yeah, you're going to get it wrong a lot. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> As everybody, everybody says that, like, there's always so much to learn, and it's true. Like, every time, every time you get a handle on something, there's something new. 
So what is your favorite system to edit in? So a long time ago, I would have always just said, I love Premiere and I think it's the best thing in the world. And then I started working with Avid and there's just nothing like it. Really? As, yeah, as an offline editor, I think it's amazing. Like the way that you can be so organized in it is really important. And, you know, I like the properly clear three-point editing. And I like that you can backtrack all the way back to the beginning and all the way forward again with your stuff. It's, I think it's also so much easier to be frame accurate. Like making mistakes in there is, is really hard to do that. Whereas I think Premiere is a little bit more a bit more slip and slide <laughs> and it's you know it's a lot easier to kind of like make a mistake and not realize you've done so i think um avid's way more precise and i love that it makes me feel like i'm being super accurate i think when you use it for the first time it feels clunky compared to premiere because you kind of have to do things avid's way like mm -hmm. if, if you don't do it the way avid wants you to do it it's not going to like it and you're not going to be able to do what you want to do. So you kind of have to like learn to get used to how it likes things. And then once you get to doing it like that, it's just so much more fluid and you can be faster with things, you know, keyboard shortcuts. Uh, there's a lot more that you can do in there than Premiere, I think. I like how with Premiere, you can use it for offline and for online quite comfortably. You know, sometimes you do need to round trip through resolve, uh, but I like that, you know, I can edit something, can go out of house for grade and mix, come back, and so it's a lot faster for me to get something out the door quicker. Mm -hmm. Whereas with Avid, like, you can't, you can't really do that in the mm -hmm. same way. Avid is an offline and LE. Okay. All right. So um, we're going to switch gears here a little bit and I'm going to share the screen so people can see the clip that you shared with us. I started playing guitar when I was 13 because I was watching a video of Laura Marling play New Romantic. I love all the detail in that video. I love how you can see the sunshine on her, the skin on her face, and like the interesting split screen decisions. And like, so how did you come up with that? Can you kind of tell us about the process? A lot of the kind of style stuff we sort of discussed with the director I work with at the time. Um, I still work with him now, actually. It could be like, four or five years old, that clip maybe. Um, and we discussed how we were gonna approach the kind of multi-format style of it and how it was gonna be like a little bit gritty, um, you know, obviously clearly very handheld. Some of the shots aren't quite like as pristine, um, but that's like the entire style of it. I'm one of those people who I'm always thinking about the next thing. I'm always trying to drive towards more. So, like I want to progress so much and I care about my career a lot. And I think like in my head, I'm like, I wish I'd known everything I know now five years ago so I could be further ahead now. Uh -huh. <laughs> Obviously it doesn't work like that. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think like if you don't know something, ask. So I think there's certain scenarios you get put in where you're like oh shit I don't sorry excuse me if I, um, <laughs> I don't know I don't know the answer to this question or I don't understand uh, this tech process or how to do this in the right way um, and you kind of get into a situation where you're like oh no I, I can't I don't feel like I can ask these questions but it's definitely better to admit that you don't know earlier on and then, you know, learn and get it right. Because there's nothing worse than trying to do something and getting it wrong when you said you knew how to do it and then it becoming a problem later down the line. 
because yeah. you lose trust in that way. Um, and I think trust is really important for the people that you're working with. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So where do you plan on your career taking you in the future? What are you really looking forward to? I want to have an opportunity to work in the States full time and to live in either New York or LA. I'd also consider Amsterdam as well as like a full time location. I think um, I don't really want to stay in London full time. Um, so I'd like to have the opportunity to, to move on and do that. But I think I need to I need to master here first <laughs> and be at a stage where I'm doing high end commercials and really high end music videos. That's what I want to do. And eventually, long long term goal, I'd love to do a Super Bowl commercial. A Super That's Bowl like commercial. My... Yeah. Right, do you have um, a company picked out? I'd really like to. Go to White House Post, maybe. White House Post? Yeah, I really like the work that they do. I like the reputation that they have. And they also have a base in London and New York. So mm-hmm. it'd be a good kind of mix for me. But we'll see. I think yeah. there'll be more, by the time I get to that point, there'll also be more options for that. Um, and, you know, I'd quite, I'd quite like to go maybe back to Marshall Street editors as an editor at some point. I mm-hmm. really, really love the people there. Um, mm-hmm. And so, yeah, I'd really like that opportunity, but the, the difference being is that they don't have a base in the States, mm-hmm. um, which is a, it's a, it's a major thing for me because that's like my next sort of huge like, goalpost. That's uh-huh. exactly what I'm doing. So I have to try and like keep that in mind. <laughs> yeah, so I think I think it's I think it's quite different. I think it's I think London versus New York is is kind of similar, but the way that advertising works in both places is very very different. I think like the directors here get a lot more input in posts, whereas from my knowledge of what I know about how it works in the states is for commercials anyway is that you know the directors tend to like work on set mostly and direct for on set and then as soon as it goes into post they sort of step away and move on to the next job Mm -hmm. so then you kind of like have a dual role in that um and i find that quite interesting yeah i didn't realize there was a difference that is really interesting so the director comes to like your edit bay yeah 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 yeah. spend quite a lot of time with the director like I'll, i'll basically do a first cut that i'm happy with and then the director will come in and we'll spend time together to get it to a point where, you know, it's kind of a happy medium between what I think works and what I want for the piece and, you know, ultimately what the director wants. And we work to that stage before we present it to anybody else. Mm-hmm. Very good. Well, Beth, I want to thank you so much for, you know, coming on to the show. Is before we kind of like tie things off, is there anything else that you wanted to put out there? Um, any other stories or information you wanted to share? Um, I guess I just sort of like wanted to say that for anyone who like wants to get into post or um, is already doing it and you know because I always get days where I'm like why am I doing this job? It's really difficult and really full-on a lot of the time you know like I'm a weekend and I'm working this weekend or really late on Friday night and sometimes when you get into those stages you're like oh god is this is this worth this like have I made the right decisions here and I think like it's definitely important to make sure that you're enjoying what you're doing 100% Um, because that definitely makes it easier when you have to do you know difficult hours and also you know being confident enough to say no, say no to things um, and looking after yourself and making sure that you know you're comfortable with things and that your you know your health comes first there were a lot of stages for me where I was pushing so hard in my career that I my health was on the back burner I wasn't looking after myself at all and I think it's really really important 
um, because of the type of industry that this is, it can get quite hectic and you can get asked to do things that is too much. And just because it's too much for you and isn't too much for somebody else doesn't make you any more of a weaker person or any, but any worse at your job. And uh, yeah, I think it's really, really important to make sure that you actually look after yourself. Mm -hmm. And maybe what are one or two ways that you'd recommend that people do that? Is it like as simple as just getting up and stretching every once in a while? Or is it something more complicated? I think, you know, like making, especially because we sit down all the time, it's quite important to have like, a, an, like some sort of exercise that you do fairly regularly when you can and have downtime. Um, whether it's, it's yoga or dancing or, uh, you know, going for a run or something that just kind of like moves your body and your mind in a different way. I think doing that is super, super important for this kind of job like in post because you are sat down a lot of the time. It's very much like an office job. And so I think it's you know, really important for your mind and your body to try and do that as much as you can. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's for sure. I know I have a standing editing station and sometimes it comes to like a certain hour of the day and it's like, oh my gosh, my legs are killing me. Like they're full of blood because I have not moved. Like I've been standing in one place editing for hours. Um, yeah. So yeah, moving around is so important. Um, yeah. I need to do that more. Hey, that's my dog. Hey. Oh. <laughs> I love dogs. I'm obsessed. It's a problem. <laughs> <That's actually. laughs> nice. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Beth. And if people want to get in touch with you or find some more of your work, where can they find you online? Um, they can find me online through the Agile website. Um, so it's Agile Films. Um, and then just yeah, on my Instagram and my reels on in my bio there. And you know, if anyone wants to message me, ask me questions about the industry or anything, then more than welcome to do so, always happy to help um, in any way that I can, especially you know, with women in post, because I really feel like this is something we need more of. Thanks for watching. I'd love to hear from you. If you enjoyed this week's episode, give us a like, leave us a question or a comment, and share with your friends. Your viewership and support helps promote women working in film. Follow us on Instagram, subscribe to us on YouTube, and join our Patreon community. Interested in being a guest or sponsor on the show? Send me a message. I'd love to hear from you. See you next week on Women in Post.